than one board of supervisors meeting. This meeting is being recorded. We'll do roll call now. Uh, Claudio Campisano. Uh, present. Thank you, Claudio. Annalisa Kohler. Present. Thank you, Annalisa. Jeff Noodleman. Present. Great. Thank you, Jeff. Let's move on to item B, levy grant contract. Colin. Hi, thank you. Colin Rowan, uh, Director of Planning and Public Affairs. Uh, I am going to give you hopefully a brief update on three uh, interwoven pieces. Uh, one on uh, some happenings in Washington, D.C. related to our project with the Army Corps of Engineers, the Portland Metro Levy System Study, uh, to the contract with the Oregon Business Development Department, uh, better known as Business Oregon, uh, that is supporting the design phase of that project with the Army Corps, and three, uh, legislation that um, we have uh, worked with legislature on le legislators on the House and Senate side to introduce in this uh, 2023 long session of the Oregon legislature. So uh, first, big news, uh, you received an email from Wendy in early January announcing that uh, the PMLS project uh, received a construction authorization as part of the Water Resources Development Act of 2022. That is a huge hurdle. That is an act of Congress saying that they are directing the Army Corps to uh, construct this project. Uh, so it was part of uh, the large national Defense Authorization Act. Uh, it was one of six projects that was uh, that received that authorization for flood safety, um, and it really is the direction of the Army Corps to include in their work plan to uh, move forward with the next phase, which is the pre-construction engineering design phase, and really directing them to uh, build this project. So that is a huge milestone. I want to thank uh, everyone on the Pen One board, uh, different organizations and companies that you represent. And uh, yeah, it's uh, worth celebrating. Nice work. Um, the other piece that we uh, that happened uh, in a mad rush at the end of December in Washington was the appropriation. So every year for this project, we are going to need to seek appropriations uh, that is congressionally uh, authorized funding uh, annually. And so in uh, the large omnibus uh, appropriations package um, in the water and energy um, appropriations, there was $3.77 million for this project uh, that that is the federal share of the first year of the pre construction engineering design. So that money is making its way. I don't know how, you know, it's some kind of Rube Goldberg machine to get it there, but uh, eventually it will uh, land in uh, Portland District uh, Army Corps of Engineers office. Uh, and that is two thirds of the funding for the first year, um, which brings us to uh, how we're funding the first year of PED, uh, which is through the Business Oregon um, contract. And so I think at the November meeting, we let you know that uh, we had been awarded the contracts by the Infrastructure Finance Authority. Um, since then, we received the contracts. The contract is included in your packet, um, but there's no action right now. Um, our legal team um, and Armand has been on point for that, has taken a look at that. Um, there's a couple of things that we want to clarify with Business Oregon, but in general, it looks good. Um, and we will be bringing a resolution to uh, the format in February to approve the board chairs to sign that contract. Uh, subsequently, we will be negotiating a design agreement with the Army Corps of Engineers. Based on the negotiation of that design agreement, we'll be coming back to the boards for a cost-sharing uh, IGA. That was a stipulation that was in the resolution that you all passed in February of last year which uh, directed staff to apply for these grant funds. So this is really great. I also want to thank um, City of Portland, uh, Metro, and the Port of Portland uh, who have contributed uh, some of the, there's a, on this grant fund, there's a 20% match that needs to be done in cash. And the City, Metro, and Port of Portland have all contributed towards that and have contributed amount uh, that will allow us to participate in the full three and a half years of PED. So that is a 
huge and really want to thank all the staff um, that have been involved um, in making that happen. Thank you. Armand, is there anything that you would want to add on those grants? Um, I don't think so, Colin. Thank you. I think I would just add that um, if this board recalls in February of last year, um, uh, each drainage district board uh, passed a resolution um, uh, agreeing to share equally in the PED phase costs, um, but contingent on uh, receiving these certain levy grant funds and then entering a cost allocation agreement. And we hope to have that cost allocation agreement for uh, this board and other boards reviews here in the coming months, um, shortly after we receive the design agreement from the core. And I'll pause just for a moment. I have one small update after, but um, are there any questions about that contract or um, our next steps around the PMLS project and construction phase? Please no reach question. out if you do. Oh, sorry, go ahead. This is Jeff. Uh, thanks, Colin. Great report. I, I did want to thank you for calling out the piece because you know, I had seen some uh, some blurbs about some of these items, but uh, the the piece about the city and uh, the port, the, the uh, contributions, I think that is huge. Uh, and uh, it, it's it's a testament to you know, some of the supervisors here who are representatives of those organizations and staff, of course. But, you know, for us old timers on this board, um, it's, that's been an issue on a hundred different topics, but this is obviously mission critical right now. Uh, and the relationship with those governmental entities, uh, it has been, you know, whatever it's been, but, uh, I applaud everybody for bringing it to where it's been and that I, I'm thrilled and appreciative of, of their contributions. Thanks, Jeff. Very much agree. Yeah, it really is um, a lot of strong partnership and um, yeah, commitment to making these investments. And so it's greatly appreciated at the staff level as well. Um, please reach out to me if you have any questions. Um, uh, Armand and I can field anything on that contract. Um, and then the finance team, um, Angel, is on here as well, has um, been really great with coordinating with Business Oregon as well from uh, the, the finance side of things and uh, with support from Lori. Uh, so it's really much appreciated. Our legal and finance team is excellent, and uh, I'm very excited to be able to move forward and PED and have that excellent support. Uh, the last update is that, um, just as noted, the uh, funding for this, at least for the local side, is coming from uh, the state levy grant fund. And that was originally created in 2015 as a levy loan program that the drainage districts worked with the state legislature and Business Oregon to help create um, the levy loan program as a, as a separate part of the Infrastructure Finance Authority Special Public Works Fund um, during first of the 2019, or sorry, first of the 20. 21 session and then in the 22 session we we're able to help support lawmakers um, make the case that statewide the loan program was excellent but there is so much need uh, at, throughout the state and a lot of communities not being able to actually um, meet the terms of the loan program that it really should be a grant program and really elevating the need for uh, statewide investments by the state in um, levy safety. And so we were able to help create the levy grant program. And this was the first round of it um, is what we're applying for now. Um, we are now working on um, having two bills move forward during this session, uh, HB 2307, uh, which is sponsored by representatives Hudson and Nelson, which is to put another $15 million into that uh, grant account. And then also Senate Bill 634 uh, being sponsored by Senators Gorsuch and Frederick. And so um, we've been in contact with uh, all of the public representatives entities, their uh, government affairs folks uh, to let them know that this is um, moving forward. Uh, our contract state lobbyist Mark Landauer um, has been meeting with different representatives and so we have um, 
we believe this will be moving into committee uh, soon and we'll report back what committee it is and keep um, in close contact with our uh, different government affairs contacts at the different entities that might be tracking this. Um, but this is, I think, a really great thing, not just for us, but for the state. We'll definitely, um, again, this will be a 60-40 split uh, where 60% of the funding needs to go to rural and disadvantaged communities. Um, and then 40% um, can go to urban communities. Uh, our system, also systems in just outside of uh, Salem, Kaiser, and in Springfield, Eugene uh, would also be able to tap into that. And so we are working with the coalition statewide to make sure that people know about these funds. We want them to apply for them and get them and apply them for levy safety, but also to help you know, build the case that this is uh, a statewide need. Um, please let me know if you have any questions uh, about those bills that are being introduced. I'll take any questions or otherwise, thank you all for your time. Claudia. Not so much a question, just really want to appreciate uh, your, uh, you and the rest of the staff. Uh, I mean, all of this is great news. All this is incredible staff work. All this is all the right things continuing to move forward in all the right ways. So um, really appreciate all the work that that you folks have done uh, over the years. It's hard hard not to thank you enough, but uh, uh, hard to thank you enough is what I meant to say. But uh, but but really, it's a, it's a pleasure to a pleasure to to work with you as you wrangle us, as you wrangle the core, as you wrangle all the uh, all the different pieces to keep to keep this incredibly complex thing moving forward. So thank you. Thanks, Claudio. Yeah, full full staff effort, and can't do it without our um, partners uh, elsewhere. So yeah, thank you all. Thanks, Claudio. Thanks, Colin. I'll do my um, my specialty, which is to state the obvious. And um, just recognize that a lot of this, the, these accomplishments take a lot of advanced planning and notification. So I really appreciate the efforts of the staff to get things on our radar sooner. And then to recognize um, Annalisa for getting that Metro, working with um, her team to get the, um, the Metro money, PJ and the port money. Claudio um, has such an extensive knowledge of um, city budget has it's been invaluable, and I certainly don't have. So we've gotten those extra contributions. And then Jeff, really, as our longest uh, standing board member, you've been here a long time, and your your uh, the the, uh, the company you represent continues to pay its assessments, and you continue to be here and provide a um, a balanced um, viewpoint. So I think we're all in this together. I just want to recognize um, everybody's doing their best. Thank you. I'm a little confused. Are we on item C where we have to talk about the contributions or do we just do that? Or are we on to item D here? Colin, I think we're on to item D, are we not? I, so, unfortunately, it's, you, you, it's you, actually you, a, um, believe it's a resolution to accept the funds. Right. Yes, that that's correct, Wendy. Colin, Colin, pretty much briefed right into item C, um, but there is a there is a resolution before the board to accept those respective funds. I see that's on page twelve. Is that right? Uh, page fifteen. I'm looking at. Is everyone seeing that? Yeah. Armand, do you want to explain why this is necessary? Yeah, really in short, um, um, I believe back in January, um, uh, Colin staff had 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 made these uh, made the request to to Port and Metro uh, via memorandum uh, for these respective funds. Um, from our end, we wanted to um, acknowledge um, uh, the respective amounts that we were going to be receiving, uh, especially as applied to the respective fiscal years. Um, and so uh, this resolution would document the transfer money um, and apply to the specific purpose for the PED phase uh, work in this PMLS project. Uh, and it just provides the direction to staff um, to, uh, to, to get those funds through whatever appropriate or mutually uh, agreed upon means. Uh, that the port and metro would would prefer as well. So, great, thank you, Armand. So, I'm looking for a resolution or a, a motion. Sorry, I'll uh, go ahead and move uh, that the 
Pen one adopts resolution number 2023-01-02, accepting funds to be allocated toward Pen, Pen one's portion of the non-federal sponsor share of pre-construction engineering and design of the Portland Metro Levy System project. I'll go ahead and second that. Great, thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Claudio. Any discussion before we vote? No discussion. Claudio Campisano. Aye. Annalisa Kohler. Aye. PJ Christopher. Aye. Jeff Middleman. Aye. James Allison votes aye. It passes unanimously. I also want to recognize that PJ Christopher has joined us. We have every board member here today. Thanks. Apologies for being late. No problem. Okay, are we ready to move on to item D, the operations update? Looks like Randy's here. Welcome, Randy. I'm here. I think Wendy's going to help me with some slides. I much appreciate that. Uh, I believe I know almost everybody, but I don't know if I've met PJ or, yeah, PJ. Um, Randy Lyons, I'm the operations manager. So hanging out with operations and um, just trying to support that team and playing a, a liaison role between admin world and the field world. So I'm um, happy to be uh, here and happy to share um, just kind of what's going on out there. So I'm excited to potentially start talking to you guys a little more and keep you a little more in the loop. So there's still groundwork happening out there. I know there's a lot of good work, in, uh, work happening on the back end, but ops is still doing stuff out there. So uh, next slide there, please. <clears throat> so I, I think most people would be interested. We recently had a pretty major ice slash rain, rain event. And I would want to know how did the system operate? So, um, you know, we had some pretty big rains within 48 hours. Some of the biggest rains I've seen in, in my time here. Um, four plus inches out on the west side over here, uh, including PIR, pump station. Um, <clears throat> fortunately, it, it, it functioned really well during the event. Um, but one of the things that came out of that was pump one failed. And so with, um, with that, it, it, it fortunately happened right as the rains are really slowing and and I was on call supervisor and I noticed, I'm like, why the hell? It said the pump is operating, but the water kept rising. So we did some investigation and I got some photos to share with you in a, set, in a little bit, but basically we, we, we brought out a dive team to do some initial inspections and the impeller that's on the bottom of the pump, one of the impeller blades completely snapped off. So that, that pump and motor were operational except for moving water. So um, more, yeah, there's, I'll talk a little more about that, but the system overall, it, it functioned well. Um, the pump station was, was keeping up during this and didn't see any, any issues, didn't see any issues in the Vanport area. Um, that pump station at the time was um, functioning like it should. And um, it, it handled, the, handled the rainstorm very well. Now the rest of the MCDD, Pen2, some other areas were a little more maxed out, but um, we the system system did really well. So um, next slide, please. So here's some photos. I'll just talk a little bit more about um, basically what we're going to do, what we're planning on doing. Got a picture of the of the motor here, pump pump and motor on the left. In the middle is that's what a, a proper impeller should be looking like. And here's a, a chunk that the divers pulled out um, off of the, uh, the current um, impeller. So it is not functional. And um, we're, we're currently working on scheduling this week um, to get a crane contractor out there to, to pull the pump and motor to, to really investigate what we're gonna be able to do. Is that a repair, rebuild? Um, full replacement, um, hopefully not the latter, um, but um, I know Bill's, he's 
spearheading this and he's been working with BES and working about funding. And um, so we're doing, we're doing what we can. We're keeping the balls, the balls moving here. I know there's probably going to be this some more conversation once Bill gets back about, you know, the funding and how, how we approach this. But uh, the one thing I would say is no matter what we do, we do need at least that, that, uh, that impeller impaired or repaired. So that system, we're, we're fortunate. There's a lot of storage out there at the PIR pump station. Um, it's going to take a long, a lot to uh, really put some stuff in, in harm's way. But without that second pump, the water will just continue to rise in, in medium rainstorms. So um, that second pump is crucial. And I think that's important for, for the board to understand as, as those further budget discussions take place. So we're doing what we can. Josh McNamee, our asset maintenance specialist, has taken lead on you know scheduling everything and analyzing and all that stuff. And since the 22 years of awesome uh, experience here and I'm confident we're going to get there. So um, just looking for look forward to all the support that you guys give us as we try to, to make this system as functional as possible. And next slide, please. For those, I think most people know, but you know, I just wanted to just quickly touch on maintenance. What's what's going on in Pen One? So we're we we continuously um, are doing our biweekly inspections. That's our operations team. Uh, we go in. It's not even new anymore, but we go out in teams of two now, just because the environment has changed over the last five years, and it's a it's a safety a safety deal for us. Um, so we got two guys going around all the districts, but we spend time twice a week in Pen One. Removing beaver dams, um, you know, unclogging culverts, inspecting pump stations, checking oilers, making sure everything, turning on and off every pump, and just making sure everything is working like it should, and um, we don't have any issues. So there's a decent amount from time to time. We did recently did a decent amount of work, uh, dish maintenance in the Vanport area. The the discharge from the Vanport pump station that runs through the property, but eventually it makes its way to PIR. There's a lot of trees, beaver activity. Um, so from time to time, we'll go out there with, with manpower and also um, smaller excavator to, to remove down trees so we continue to have access, we keep water flowing. Um, that stuff's happened and, and that type of work's happened in the last month. And one of our annual maintenance um, items is every year for Pen 1, and all the other districts, but the Pen One pump station PIR, we do our annual pump and motor testing, major testing, vibration analysis, um, multiple tests to understand the condition that, that that asset is in. And when we get those reports back, that helps us make really good data-driven, you know, thoughtful decisions about how we, you know, move items in our CIP and budgets and how we want to, you know, get the, the most life out of that asset. So. That's just wrapping up. The only thing that we have to finish on that is Josh still has some oil samples to take and, and send into the lab. But um, those reports will be back in the next month and um, always a fun thing to kind of kind of see where things at, are at, any new issues arise. So very critical, this good annual routine maintenance to um, maintain these pumps and motors. Next slide, please. And this is a big one. Uh, we've been doing a lot of work. Um, it's really been Bill and Josh really taking the lead on this with working with the port. But that Vanport pump station has been, the doors have been shut and the pumps and motor, the pump and motor is turned off. Um, the foundation and structural integrity of that is really dilapidated. Uh, there's, it's from conveyance and maybe even more from all the beaver activity and beaver dens and just dilapidated support beams. Um, that pump station is literally falling in on itself. And we've been having these discussions for a few months with the port after the guys really seen some, some activity that didn't seem um, comfortable. And I believe last week, no, Monday this morning, or the port last week decided, okay, let's close the doors. Um, a temporary fix is going to be MCDD is going to bring their four, our four inch pump, and that's in this photo you can see here. 
and we're currently moving water that either draws water out of um, Vanport Lake or whatever you want to call it. And then all that drainage that's come through the Expo Center and all that. And that's that real, that area is really what really needs that, that water moved or else parking lots and train tracks and stuff could be underwater. So um, temporarily, we're, we're leaving our pump out there. We're, we're working with the port and figuring out all those details about you know, with finance and stuff and through our IGA just to manage that. Um, there's, they're looking at long-term solutions. I don't want to get too far in the weeds, but potential dem demoing that structure, putting in a submersible exactly. pump. Um, exactly. They haven't quite decided what, where they want to land on that, but um, no matter what, however they move forward, MCDD staff will be um, heavily involved in that and probably doing most of that work of them, if it's demo, installation, et cetera and also managing maybe electrical contractor to, to hook that up. So, you know, that's basically, the, that's the gist. I know I got 10 minutes, but um, we're out there, we're moving. Um, a lot of communication with the port, um, continue to have good communication relationships with the uh, city of Portland Raceway. And um, we're always, you know, always communicating with the track manager and stuff. We got cranes out there and they got events. And um, so we've got good relationships and continue to, to grow those so um it's one of the, the more fun places to go visit each time because there's a lot of open space out there and it's nice Van, between vanport and pir pretty nice so even though they got their issues some of the infrastructure but um it's 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 going pretty well except for some of the little problems that we're dealing with but we got to handle i think has anybody got any questions i don't want to say too much not enough but um claudio what do you got? First, got to find the unmute button. All right, there we go. Uh, yeah, no. Well, you know, first of all, I want to really uh, thank you for coming in, talking, uh, talking to us about the operations. I think it's, uh, you know, uh, we we only hear about operations, you know, a couple times a year, but uh, but it's a good reminder because that's the that's the core of the work, right? That's why we do all this. So, uh, so thank you uh, for for coming in and giving us that that update. Um, can you can you remind us sort of uh, the you said where where it's the the Vanport is uh, Vanport pump is pumping from where does it pump to Can you remind me of that? So without looking at a map, basically that there's a discharge from that pump station and a ditch that wraps back around it towards PIR, and so I think it's Forest Avenue, and basically it, is, it does a, a tight U and then it runs through the woods all the way out towards um, out towards that bigger ditch system. And that's, those ditch systems, once you get back into the PIR section, it's um, really unique, they're really big areas. And, you know, there's a lot of flood storage in there and stuff. And um, during that rain event, it was pretty impressive to see how high those waters have gone and just how much water is going in there. But um, fortunately, you know, they're not four or five foot ditches. They're 25 feet across, 30, 40 feet across in some areas. and um, a, a lot of water really goes through there and only through that one PIR pump station, which is old and we're seeing some, some issues with it. And, um, but yeah, I hope that. Ends. Yep. No, that's great. Thank you. Randy, I did want to mention that you and I have met one time. You gave an incredible tour of the river when I started with a gym and we were out there and it was fun. So we did meet a while back. That's, I apologize. No yeah, problem, man. That, 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 no problem. That's, that's the fun stuff. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. I that's really enjoyed that. Stuff. We went up river, down river, it was fun. Mm -hmm. I think so, it's coming yeah. up on almost two years ago. Yeah, Crazy. it was a while ago. Yeah, and I look forward to either me or one of my one of the team members to, to be a part of those. I know coming out of that uh, last couple of years, hopefully, these these groups and boards are um, finding time to to get back out there. We always support that and trying to share some knowledge about the system that we. Yeah, it's fun having you guys out on that tour. You guys are out on the ground. You know what really happened. So it's good to have you guys uh, telling us how it goes. Thanks for that. Yeah. yeah and before well, good Randy, to see you again. I apologize. Before no Randy gets back to work, um, I I just want to echo what the board members have said, which is you know kind of the heart and soul of the operation and the reason we exist is to really help Randy and his crew get the work done and keep the water moving and 
Um, we're spending a lot of time trying to make sure with the resources we have, they're safe and have the tools they need and certainly more to do there, but um, we'll try and get this kind of presentation in front of you more frequently. Yeah, I just wanna echo, um, thanks to Randy. It, um, it strikes me, um, I really appreciate your knowledge of the uh, built infrastructure, you know, these pump stations and what they do, but also the observations around the green assets, the ditches and all the vegetation that um, help the system function together better to meet the needs of um, the development within the and the operations within the property, within the district, and then also those ecosystem services as well. I really appreciate your um, knowledge of that. Um, and uh, it looks like you're having fun on the job. Don't let Jim know you're having too much fun. He might give you more work or something, but I appreciate that you're having fun on the job. That's, that's what it's all about. Not every day is fun for Randy. I can attest yeah. to that. Yeah, you wanna, <laughs> yeah. We were, I was in on a ice storm on Christmas Eve and no, I mean, it is fun, but it has its challenges at times, but no, I, I love it. And I love this. And I, I just look forward to being able to maybe touch base with this this group more more frequently because I think this connection is really, really important. And everybody from the admin world and from Jim down supports us unconditionally. But um, I think to continue to have this connection is really good. So. Great. Thank, thank you for the opportunity. Of course. Anything else before we transition to the budget discussion? OK, well, thank you, Randy. Looks like we're moving on to item E. Fiscal year 23-24 budget orientation with Lori. Great, thank you. Um, can you all see my screen? Yes. Thank you. So today's the first in a series of discussions we'll be having related to the Pen 1 budget for the upcoming fiscal year. Yeah, believe it or not, we're already um, full feed into the budget process that feels like we just finished. So today we'll take a look at the budget calendar to give you a sense of our next steps in the process. We'll also be looking at the forecast for the current year. The forecast process is an essential part of our budget process because it informs our estimates for project budgets that need to be carried forward into the upcoming year, carry forward fund balances um, that'll provide funding for next year's budget, and also give us a sense of the spending patterns that need to be considered for the upcoming budget process. We're also going to take a look at the current MCDD staffing levels. We're sharing this with all of our boards so that you're all familiar with where we're at with our staffing um, as, as we do provide those administrative and maintenance services for each district. And finally, we'll take a look at planning for the upcoming budget. We'll be presenting a draft list of budget priorities and also be asking for some initial guidance on possible increases to the assessment rates for the upcoming year. So now we'll just jump right in. This is our budget calendar showing key dates for the upcoming budget process. We're at step one currently, which is the presentation of the kickoff of the budget season and our review of the current year forecast. We'll be updating that forecast as we get closer to the approved budget to ensure that we're on track to provide the level of fund balance carry forward that we're currently projecting. Staff are currently working diligently on their department budgets for each district, and these efforts will be consolidated into a budget proposal for you to review. In April, we'll bring that proposed budget to you for review and discussion. And in May, we'll be back with any updates to that proposed budget and ask you to consider the updated version for approval. In June, you'll adopt the budget and we'll begin operating under it in July, on July 1st. So in your package, you have a detailed version of the forecasted financial results for the current fiscal year. And this is a summary of that forecast. Materials and services are projected to be $18,000 lower than budget with a positive variance in legal of $37,000 that will need to be considered for carryover into the upcoming fiscal year budget because of the timing of the legal work related to the transition to the urban district. Capital outlay has a positive variance due to timing of projects with the PIR pump station replacement, PMLS, 
and SCADA system upgrades identified for potential carryover into fiscal year 23-24. And the ending fund balance is, is $1.4 million higher than, or $1.6 million higher than budget, but you'll see that in future slides that we're anticipating most of this positive variance lands in carry forward capital commitments. So let's jump right to that. So here is our capital spending, and we do have some significant timing differences anticipated to result in carry forward of about $1.4 million into the upcoming budget. We'll refine this amount as we get closer to the end of the year and also refine timing of any grant dollars supporting those capital acquisitions. This slide shows our projected fiscal year and fund balances. The pie chart shows the allocation of that balance with 92% of the balance being restricted for capital spending. Moving to the bar chart at the right, you can see the comparison of our projected fund balances by category to our last two years in audited balances. So as you can see, I will state the obvious here, our operating reserve is pretty small. We're basically operating year to year um, with the support of the city of Portland, providing us the operating fundings that we, that we need to be able to balance the budget. So we're not seeing um, any change in that really. It, it looks like we have a lot more fund balance, but it's all just because of those capital projects and the timing that we'll just move on to the next year. All right, so here we have the MCDD staffing, the level of staffing in the current year budget by category. The chart on the bottom shows the detail by department. So we currently have four open positions that are being posted in the upcoming weeks. We actually have some of those that are up and live on our new um, electronic HR system that's being implemented, um, including an engineering position, two operations positions, and we have a position yet to post in public affairs. So the key takeaways in our financial projections for PEN 1 are detailed here. We'll be starting 23-24 with very little and carry forward operating fund balance. This is consistent with our historical results, but makes things very challenging if there are unexpected repairs that occur in a particular year, which is kind of what we're seeing right now. Um, we have some decisions to make about assessment rate increases. We implemented an 8% increase in this current year's rates, um, but we have a compression rate of about 44%. So what that really meant to us, um, even though it was a large percentage increase in assessment rate, it was less than $40,000 in additional revenue for the district. So we'll need some board direction on how we want to kind of confront those rate increases for next year, um, knowing that it doesn't have it can have a pretty major impact on a property owner, but it doesn't have a huge impact on our revenue budget because of those compression numbers. And then in the capital projects, we're pulling together the CIP for the upcoming year, and we'll also have some carry forward projects from the current year budget. I'm going to jump now to the budget priorities. Um, at the top is meeting our core mission of flood protection and prevention, especially as we watch the impact of weather related flooding to our south in California, this mission seems even more critical. Um, our employees are a very close second and may, um, you could really even flip those if you so chose. They keep our operations going, provide that flood protection for our district and their safety is the utmost of importance and should continue to be a priority for the district. Getting the urban district up and running in order to address these funding issues and to streamline governance to allow further support of the hundreds of millions of dollars of capital support we're poised to receive is also a priority. And that leads to the advancement of the PMLS and the FEMA capital projects as well. And finally, providing adequate support services to allow for compliance is our final priority for the budget. And these are drafts, so we're asking the board members to take a look at this and give us feedback on these. Um, and with that, I'm going to stop sharing and see if there are any questions um, and also hope to get some guidance or feedback on how you would like to approach an initial round of the budget for the increases in assessments. 
thoughts, questions? Thank you, Lori. Open it up to the board. Gosh, I made the room go quiet. Maybe, maybe I'll jump in then quickly. Um, go ahead, Claudio. My, my point is minor. Oh, no. Uh, mine probably even more so. Well, I was um, gonna, I was gonna ask if you two <laughs> back off. No, you go for uh, it. it. Have have you done? I mean, I, I understand and and I can appreciate that the overall impact on uh, the budget is nominal on the scheme of things with any type of a of an increase. But have you done anything to show per property owner what that proposed increase? will be um we are just getting started with that we just got the information from the county in the last couple of weeks by individual property owner as to what the um, change in the assessments what the impact was and i think particularly with this district it's it's going to be important for us to dig into that a little bit to see um, what's happening with the compression um, because it just makes for an interesting mix for us, right? When you have that high of a compression rate, it may be that we've gotten to the point where, you know, even if you do a 10% increase, it's really not gonna have a significant impact as more and more properties get compressed within the district. You just don't, you, you don't get any more money when you have compression rates that are this high. So definitely um, need to dig into that. We've also been working with the city of Portland on identifying a little bit of an increase in their kind of backup funding that they give us to make sure that we can balance the budget. So I think that's really gonna help us. Um, we're very appreciative for their will willingness to talk to us about that. That's really gonna help us to get balanced this year. Um, there's just not a there's not a lot of room to play. It's it's helping stabilizing our projections, having those fixed fees, and we know exactly what those fees related to the admin costs and the um, maintenance costs are going to be. Um, and we what we've talked about with the other boards is coming back with some more analysis on the impact of changes to assessments, so that you can see as we start to look through that what that may look like. So um, I'm gonna th think about that and see if maybe we can have another discussion before we come with the proposed budget so that you can start to kind of see those dollar impacts and what that what that does to the property owners. Thank you. Because yeah, I do think that's important because mm -hmm. you know the water doesn't know who owns the property. And yeah, and to continue to saddle uh, and it is what it is. I mean, mm -hmm. there's the city and what have you, but uh, the private property owners, and I don't include just our company, you know, but the private property owners, you know, as James alluded to, have been uh, carrying uh, a burden. And yes. as you say, you know, uh, to any property owner, uh, an increase is an increase, whereas is it just a drop in the bucket? I mean, any dollar is helpful. I get that, but but you know we have to be you know mindful. Uh, look at this thing on a holistic approach. I Thanks. agree. Thank you, Claudio. Looks like we lost James. Um, oh uh, yeah. So really, you know, kind of initially similar similar thoughts would be useful to see sort of what that uh, what that is you know assessment would generate on a property by property basis because I think. You know we're we're a small enough uh, a small enough group of properties that we can you know, we can do that uh, relatively fine grained uh, or mm -hmm. you know as fine grained as it goes, um, you know. And one thing I'll note is if if you ever need any support, sort of assessing you know determining a, a, a compression impacts. I know that uh, City of Portland's economist has a lot of experience in that area. Um, so you know, Thank reach you. out to Peter Peter Halsman. Um, I, I'm sure that he could he could help uh, at least answer questions, if not give you some quick answers on on, on some numbers. But besides that, I, I, I maybe this is a can of worms. But um, since I started in this role, I've always actually been a little shocked that um, that compression is even a factor. I, I, my understanding is that we're not talking about a property tax assessment, so I'm not sure why it's uh, why uh, why compression happens uh, due to measures five and 47. So is this something that 
has been a question for anybody else on this call. And, and, and I'm wondering, you know, uh, we don't need to answer the question now, but I, I've never voiced it, uh, you know, except maybe with, uh, uh, with Casey, but, uh, you know, a long time ago, but mm -hmm. it, it does seem like a, like an odd one. Um, cause it doesn't, feel it like actually, it, it actually is part of the regs. So assessments fall into the same general government pool, okay. um, for compression, which is that $10 per thousand um, limit um, for, for property compression. The local option levies I have found in some research on the MCDD side, because we had some odd things happen with compression on MCDD this year. Mm -hmm. um, the local option levies are the first to go. So if you've got a local option levy and the properties are compressed, then you're the yeah. first fall off of the list, you don't get um, squished in with everybody else, which I didn't realize. So I'm, you know, you learn something new. Yeah. Almost so I, I can tell you that, that our local option levy did not impact this district. So no, it uh, did not. Yeah, so, <laughs> um, yeah, no, no, for sure. Well, that's, that's helpful. I'm glad that, that that's a sort of an asked and answered question. Cause it's been something mm -hmm. that's been bouncing around in my head, wondering like, is it just cause we use the, 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 the county's uh, assessment system and, and that's why they just, they do nope. the math and they tell you, okay. It's Great. actually part of the regs. Wonderful. I just, it, sorry, I had a, a, a number of questions. I'll just run, run through them real quick. The capital, you mentioned that we'd be maintaining, you know, we'd have a capital re reserve essentially to fund the, you know, the, the existing capital plan, primarily PIR pump replacement. And I think PMLS, there's a big, big uh, piece for that as well. A lot of that is is currently funded with BES resources. Aren't, wouldn't they be on a, on a reimbursement basis? So we wouldn't really be carrying yes. that as balance, would we? Yeah, so both sides will go away. Right now yeah. we have both sides in there because we weren't sure about the timing. Yeah. That's why I kind of call it a carry forward because I Great. don't think it's going to end up um, yeah. looking quite that way because it is on a reimbursement reimbursement yeah. basis. And and I and asked we're the question. pulling all of those numbers together. Um, we um, sent a request begging for a couple of days reprieve just because we've got a staff member out that needs yeah. that's been working on that with us. But um, yeah, definitely getting that request pulled together so you all can get your um, budget Great. requests in on time. And, and, and one of the reasons why I mentioned that is because as, as you, as, as, uh, as you all are showing your financials to other folks at the city, having discussions about, uh, about city support for the district, um, you probably don't want to show regard, you don't want to have to show, yeah. explain, et cetera, uh, over a million dollars in balance, uh, especially if you don't really have it. Um, yeah. because I think that'll, that'll undercut the, the conversation. Um, I think that's a very good point. Thank you. We will um, make that update. Yeah. Um, and then, and then I guess my final question is, and I'm sure we'll talk about it as we move into the details in, in, in the coming months, but we just heard, uh, you know, uh, a couple of, uh, sort of, uh, you know, uh, a couple of bits of downside news on the various pumps in the district. Yes. Um, and, and I'm, I imagine that those will have both near term operating, uh, costs as we kind of try and put patches on those and and and, and keep that moving forward. But then also uh, there'll be uh, capital impacts as well. So just there's you know. yes, there's a capital request coming. So that's what we're working to pull together so that you have all that information and know what the dollars look like. But yes, Great. awesome. All right, that's all I got. Thanks for your meal. Thank you. Other questions? Um, sounds like I need to come back with some assessment analysis for you all to take a look at so that we can talk about impacts and kind of what we wanna do with those numbers. So I have that in my notes and we'll plan on doing so. Um, was there any feedback on the budget priorities? Do you all feel like that's a reasonable reflection of what we should be focusing on? All right, well, thank you. I appreciate your time today. Claudia, we're excited for the city of Portland to take the lead in the legislature to make our assessments exempt from the property tax compression. So <laughs> we're right behind you. <laughs> well, you know, isn't that part of what, why we want to move to the uh, to the uh, to the the uh, the new the new rates? You know, it, it does. The, 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 the rates have their own set of challenges, but yeah, some I'm, I'm combination sure. of challenges is ultimately going to emerge as a successful approach. So yeah. So I, I will comment on the on the on the uh, the priorities. I, you know, you noted that one one could flip those first two. I might actually suggest that one does flip those first two. Um, you know, in uh, you know Maslow's hierarchy of of uh, flood protection, uh, you need the staff before you can do any of the operations. Um, and and so 
I think that uh, that um, making sure that they know that they're uh, you know they're valued as as the number one priority because they they do the work they 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 keep us keep us all going. Um, you know, I, I, I know that that's a, a you know staff safety is a is a huge issue for for my organization, uh, and, and I know it is for yours. And I think uh, it's important to signal that to the team. Thank you. I think that's a great idea, and we will do so. Just want to agree. Thank you for bringing that up, Claudio. Sorry, folks, I've got a pretty unstable internet this morning, but I I think the old saying is that culture eats eats strategy for breakfast and i think that comes when you know you have someone like randy here and honestly every every staffer who's come before the board um has that esprit de corps um and that um, kind of um willingness and enthusiasm that comes from feeling like they're part of an organization that has their back so i, I hope people feel that way and if if not i would want to know about that but i agree that um at all times, and certainly in these times, staff safety and support is number one. I think it's fair to say we're making progress and there's more to do on that, James, so. Great, thank you. Any other questions or comments for Lori? I, again, I apologize the internet. I don't know not, if it's not just your, me. Not your but... internet, my internet. <laughs> I don't know if it's just me and I'm weird, but I definitely get excited during this budget season and seeing how stuff changes and it's kind of fun. So thanks for the work and I'm looking forward to digging in. Thank you. It's nice to know I have someone that's excited about these. <laughs> it's yeah. kind of fun you, to see what happens. And... <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, I, at, I, at the end of the day, this is such critical work for us along with uh, the awesome legal support we get because fundamentally it's not about money it's about trust and if we don't have the public's trust we don't get the money and so the the work that Lori and Hong and procurement and everybody does is really just so utterly fundamental to our ability to achieve our mission but um, thank you for being enthusiastic about it it can feel mundane and constant but it's really really foundational to our ability to operate so thanks for your help with that and for the oversight yeah, I joke with my organization, you know, we've got an 18 month, 18 month budget cycle for a 12 month budget. So, you know, it's, uh, it's nonstop. So. Great. Well, thank you all. I hope you can hear me. If with that, again, thank you, Lori. We'll move on to item F, executive session for the PMLS real estate discussion. So now the board will convene an executive session for the purposes of discussing information and confidential legal advice or attorney client communications exempt or otherwise protected from public disclosure under federal freedom of information act 5 usc 552 uh, i guess subsections b and c or state public records law ors 192.345 uh, section or subsection 6 you know ors 192.3558 9A, ORS 192-6602F, and ORS 40.225. I think I covered it, I hope. Um, do we cease recording at this time, or do we maintain recording? Yes, I will um, pause the recording and ask um, 